dearest Joseph, upon this day I set pen to paper with a heart weighed down by the knowledge that I earnestly pray never comes to rest upon your shoulders. My son, it is with the utmost urgency that I beseech thee to refrain from descending into the subterranean cavern that lies beneath the venerable estate which we call our home. In my recent explorations I have chanced upon a most ancient and forbidden tome, replete with matters of the occult and other dark secrets beyond the ken of mortal understanding. For the sake and salvation of our family and most particularly your cherished progeny Marcus and Edward, I have hidden this dread volume in a place where, God willing, it shall never be unearthed. It is of paramount importance that they remain ignorant of its existence, lest curiosity lead them down a path of perdition from which there is no return. I entreat thee, Joseph, to join your dear wife Priscilla in devoting your lives to the pursuit of simplicity and honesty. Impart unto your children the values of diligence, humility and brotherly affection. Let them grow and flourish in the warmth of a tranquil existence, far from the sinister shadows that lurk beneath the foundations of our home. I harbour the gravest apprehensions that to delve into the mysteries contained within this accursed tome would bring forth unspeakable horrors upon not merely our lineage but perchance upon the very world itself. I implore you, my son, resist the siren call of forbidden knowledge and see to it that our noble name remains untarnished by the darkness that slumbers beneath our feet. This sacred charge I entrust unto you, Joseph. Safeguard our family and ensure that our legacy is one of love, compassion and honour. Yours in perpetuity, Charles Weevil. My dearest Joseph, As the days turn to weeks, and the weeks to months since your departure to Europe, I find myself reflecting on the life we once shared and the family we built together. Since the passing of your father, our once happy home has been cast into a deepening shadow. Our beloved boys, Marcus and Edward, long for their father's presence, guidance and love. I fear they grow unruly in your absence, and I beseech you to consider returning home for their sake, if not for mine. It is true that our relationship has become strained since the loss of your dear father, I understand the depths of your grief, and I endeavoured to be a steadfast and supportive wife throughout this difficult period. However, it seemed that there was naught I could do to ease your burden or mend the rift that grew between us. With the passage of time, I pray that you may now find it within your heart to see reason and return to the family that yearns for you. The boys need their father now more than ever to guide them on the path to becoming honourable and decent men. They need to learn from your wisdom and strength and to know that they are loved and cherished. Our family is incomplete without you, Joseph, and I fear the consequences of your continued absence upon their young and impressionable hearts. I implore you, my dear husband, to consider the importance of your role within our family. Return to us, Joseph, and let us work together to rebuild the life we once knew for the sake of our boys and the love we once shared. Yours with all my heart, Priscilla. Today marks yet another day since Joseph's departure, leaving me to face the challenges of raising our boys alone. Though my heart aches with a grief that seems unending, I must summon my strength and resolve to guide Marcus and Edward through these tumultuous times. I find solace in the belief that, as their mother, I can still provide them with the love and support they need to navigate the trials of their youth. The boys are growing so quickly, and it pains me to witness their struggles without their father by their side. Edward's laughter, once so bright and carefree, has become muted, while Marcus bears a furrowed brow, a weight of worry resting heavily upon his young shoulders. I can only imagine the questions and uncertainties that plague their minds as they grapple with the absence of the man who should be their steadfast role model. Yet, in spite of my own sorrow, I am determined to raise these boys to the best of my ability. I will teach them the values of kindness, honesty and resilience, and I will do my utmost to ensure that they grow into compassionate, responsible men. Though Joseph may have chosen to leave us, I will stand strong as their mother, their guardian and their confidant. As I look to the future, I am filled with a quiet resolve. I know that the road ahead may be fraught with difficulty, but I am prepared to face whatever challenges may come. 
For the sake of Marcus and Edward, and for the memory of the love that once bound our family together, I will carry on. With the grace of God, we shall persevere, and one day, perhaps, we shall find peace and happiness once more. A month has now passed since the dreadful accident that left our dear Edward wheelchair-bound, and I find myself struggling to come to terms with the magnitude of this tragedy. Each day, I see the unspoken pain in Edward's eyes as he tries to adapt to his new reality, and my heart aches for him. He was once such a lively, spirited boy, and to see him now confined to his chair is more than I can bear. Marcus, too, has been deeply affected by the accident. He is racked with guilt, believing himself solely responsible for what has befallen his beloved brother. I have tried my best to comfort him, to assure him that accidents happen and that we must stand together as a family to support Edward. But I fear that Marcus's guilt has taken root in his soul and that he may never forgive himself. In these trying times, I have turned to prayer, seeking solace and guidance from the Lord. I pray that he may grant us the strength to face the challenges ahead and that he may bring healing and peace to our wounded hearts. I have also taken it upon myself to learn everything I can about caring for Edward's needs, determined to provide him with the love and support he requires during his recovery. I have been in touch with doctors and therapists, seeking their expertise in helping our family navigate this unfamiliar terrain. Despite the shadows that have fallen upon our lives, I still hold on to the hope that together we can overcome this tragedy. I will do everything in my power to help both Marcus and Edward heal and find their way back to happiness, no matter how long it takes. It is my duty and my purpose as their mother, and I will not waver in my devotion to them. Today marks a turning point in our family's journey towards healing, as we have welcomed the lovely Genevieve into our home to help care for Edward. She comes to us with glowing recommendations and a kind-hearted disposition, and I have high hopes that she will be a positive influence on Edward's life. Since Genevieve's arrival, I have noticed a change in Edward's demeanour. The light that had been dimmed by his accident seems to be rekindling, and I have caught him laughing and smiling more often in her company. It warms my heart to see him finding joy once again, and I am grateful to Genevieve for the role she is playing in his recovery. Unfortunately, Marcus has continued to isolate himself, retreating to the library for hours on end, immersing himself in books and studies. I often find him fast asleep at the table, a testament to his relentless pursuit of knowledge. I worry about the toll this is taking on him, both physically and mentally. While I understand that he is seeking solace and distraction from his guilt, I cannot help but be concerned for his well-being. I have tried to engage him in conversation, to draw him out of his self-imposed isolation, but he remains distant and aloof. It pains me to see my two boys suffering in their own ways, and I am at a loss for how to help them both. My hope is that Genevieve's presence and the improvements in Edward's condition will eventually inspire Marcus to rejoin the family and rediscover his own happiness. For now, I can only pray for guidance and continue to support my sons in any way I can, trusting that brighter days lie ahead for us all. As the day of Marcus's departure for Durham to study theoretical physics approached, I noticed a heartwarming change in the relationship between him and Edward. The distance that had grown between them in recent years seemed to shrink as they spent more time together, cherishing the remaining days they had before Marcus would leave. Their bond as brothers appeared to grow stronger, and it brought me a sense of relief and hope for their future. Joseph's life in Europe seems to be going well, or so I've heard. While I wish him all the best, I must confess that the feelings I once had for him have faded with the passage of time. His absence and our estrangement have left a void that I have found comfort in filling with the companionship of another. The boys are not aware of this, and I have no intention of sharing this part of my life with them at present. I still hope that someday the boys will see their father again and perhaps build a relationship with him. However, the love that I once felt for Joseph is now but a distant memory. As the days go by, I find myself more focused on the present and the future, 
seeking happiness and stability for my sons and myself. Dear Marcus, it is with a heavy heart that I write to you today, with the assistance of Genevieve. I hope you are doing well at university, and that your studies are progressing as you had hoped. Sadly, I must share with you the news of our dear mother's recent passing. Her health had been failing for some time, but she insisted that we keep it from you, fearing it would disrupt your focus and dedication to your studies. She wanted you to succeed, and not be burdened by worry. Genevieve has been a tremendous help, not only in caring for mother, but also in managing the arrangements that must now be made. She has been a pillar of strength for us all, and I am truly grateful for her presence and support. I will reach out to our father, though I expect no more than a muted response. I look forward to seeing you soon, dear brother. Take care and travel safely. Yours affectionately, Edward. Can't believe she's gone. Priscilla, my love, my secret. We kept it hidden. Our love, our secret. No one can know. I'm breaking inside, but I can't show it. Not a soul to talk to. It's locked inside me. My pain. My grief. The funeral was today. I watched from a distance. I could see Marcus and Edward lost in their own sorrow. But what do they know of mine? I wanted to be near her, to touch her one last time, but I couldn't. It's not my place. I remember our first kiss, under a tree behind the chapel. A summer's day, the sun shining through the leaves. A perfect moment, frozen in time. A memory I'll carry until my dying day. The love we shared, the happiness we felt. All gone now. The mansion, it's too much to bear. I can't stay here, not without her. I've made my decision. I'll leave. They'll find a new groundskeeper. Someone who doesn't know the secrets, the love we shared. It's time for me to go. A fresh start, a new life. But I'll never forget her. Never forget the love we had. No one will ever know. It was ours, and it will stay ours. Forever. The time has come. Goodbye, my love. It's been a while since I've last seen Marcus around the house. He used to come and check on Edward frequently, but lately his visits have become rarer. Edward has noticed it too, and he seems a bit disheartened by his brother's absence. I wish there was something I could do to bridge the growing distance between them. I wonder what's keeping Marcus so preoccupied. This day, I made a most remarkable discovery within the unexplored region beneath the mansion. In a hidden chamber, shrouded by darkness and seemingly untouched by the passage of time, I chanced upon a most ancient tome that speaks of dimensions and powers beyond our mortal comprehension. Bound in worn leather and adorned with curious symbols, the book emitted an aura of mystique that beckoned me forth. The knowledge contained within its yellowed pages is as wondrous as it is terrifying. Tales of entities and realms that defy imagination fill the manuscript, and my mind races with the possibilities they present. I cannot resist the allure of potential discoveries that may await me as I delve into the occult. What secrets, what marvels might these otherworldly realms hold? As I stood in the depths of the hidden chamber, the weight of the tome in my hands I was overcome by a sense of destiny. It is as though the fates have conspired to bring me to this moment, to set me on a path toward unlocking the mysteries of the universe. I am consumed by an insatiable curiosity and an unyielding determination to explore the unknown. Edward mentioned today that he's worried about Marcus. He said that whenever they talk, Marcus seems distracted and distant, as if his mind is somewhere else entirely. I can tell that it bothers him, but he tries to hide his concern. I hope Marcus realizes how much his brother needs him right now. The 11th of October, 1983. I have accomplished a most extraordinary feat. The summoning of a supernatural being from one of the dimensions described in the Venerable Tome. After days of studying the cryptic incantations and preparing the requisite materials, I performed the ritual with trembling hands and a racing heart. As the final words left my lips, the room was filled with another worldly energy, and a chill permeated the air. Before my very eyes, the creature materialized from the swirling mists, a sight both awe-inspiring and deeply unsettling. Its form was fluid, like a shadow given life, 
constantly shifting and undulating. A multitude of eyes like glowing embers adorned its ethereal visage, each gazing at me with an unnerving intensity. The being did not speak, but I could sense a strange intelligence behind its myriad eyes. It hovered in place as if studying me, weighing my intentions and my worthiness. It seemed almost curious, and for a fleeting moment I felt a connection, a shared desire to understand the unknown. But just as quickly as it appeared, the creature vanished, slipping back into its own realm as the mists dissipated. It was an awe-inspiring sight, beholding the creature materialize before my very eyes. A simple entity. It was proof that there is far more to uncover and comprehend. This breakthrough has fortified my determination to continue my research, for I now know that the boundaries of our reality can be breached, and there is much yet to learn about the mysteries that lie beyond. I had a brief encounter with Marcus today in the hallway. He looked tired and unkempt, like he hadn't slept in days. I asked if everything was all right, but he just brushed off my concerns and said he was immersed in his research. I couldn't help but worry about him, but I don't want to overstep my boundaries. Still, I hope he takes better care of himself for his own sake and for Edward's. The 19th of October, 1983. Following the remarkable summoning of the being from another dimension, I have become consumed by a newfound ambition to create a more stable portal, one that would grant me greater access to the secrets and wonders of the other realms. Night and day I toil in my study, poring over the tome's arcane knowledge and consulting other esoteric texts in search of the elusive key. Through painstaking experimentation and countless trials, I have managed to create a portal, albeit an ephemeral one. The energies required to sustain such a gateway are immense, and the strain upon my mind and body is palpable. Yet my resolve is unwavering, for the fleeting glimpses I have caught of the other side have been nothing short of extraordinary. When the portal flickers into existence, I am afforded a narrow window into a realm that defies all earthly logic and understanding. Alien landscapes stretch out before me, their colors and shapes unlike anything found in our world. Strange creatures, both wondrous and terrifying, inhabit these lands, Beings that challenge the very foundations of our knowledge of life itself. These tantalizing visions serve as a constant reminder of all that remains to be discovered, and they only serve to fuel my desire to forge a more permanent connection between our world and the dimensions beyond. I know that the path I tread is fraught with danger and uncertainty, but I cannot turn back. There is too much at stake, too many secrets that demand to be unveiled. Edward's condition is getting worse, and Marcus is still nowhere to be seen. I've tried to keep his spirits up, but I can see that he's missing his brother's presence. It breaks my heart to see him like this. I wish Marcus would realize how important it is for him to be here with Edward. I know he's working on something important, but Edward needs him now more than ever. Edward shared a poem with me today, which he had composed in a moment of introspection. It spoke of distance and yearning, and it was clear that he was reflecting on the growing gap between him and his brother. Here it is. Beneath the fading light of day, two brothers' hearts have gone astray. With shadows long and voices hushed, in separate worlds their spirits crushed. Once bound by blood, by love, by fate, now find themselves in disparate states, one mind consumed by visions grand, the other left to understand. O oh, distant star that burns so bright, do you too yearn to bridge the night, to close the gap, to quell the ache, to heal the bonds that time did break. So let the wayward heart return, and may the light of love yet burn. In twilight's grasp may we be whole, two brothers' hearts, one kindred soul. I found it beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. It's hard to see Edward struggling with the distance between him and his brother. I hope they can find their way back to each other soon. Subject Dimensional Portal Experiments Over the past several months, Dr. Marcus Weevil and I have been conducting a series of experiments in an attempt to establish a stable portal to another dimension. Our research has been based on the information obtained from an ancient tome discovered by Dr. Weevil in a previously unexplored region beneath the mansion. The experiments have involved the use of advanced energy manipulation techniques with the objective of creating a rift between our dimension and the target dimension. 
So far, we have conducted multiple tests with varying degrees of success. Below, I will detail our most significant findings. Experiment 1. Initial Rift Formation In our first attempt to open a portal, we were able to create a small and unstable rift. The rift was short-lived, lasting only a few seconds before collapsing. However, it provided us with valuable data for future experiments. Experiment 2. Enhanced Energy Projection we hypothesized that increasing the energy input would result in a more stable portal. In this experiment, we utilized a modified energy projection system, which allowed us to generate more focused and powerful energy beams. The results showed a significant improvement in portal stability, but the rift remained unstable and closed after approximately one minute. Experiment 3. Harmonic Resonance Alignment we theorized that aligning the energy frequencies to match the target dimension would further stabilize the portal. By analyzing the data from previous experiments, we identified the potential resonance frequency of the other dimension. Adjusting our energy projection system to match this frequency, we succeeded in generating a more stable portal, which remained open for over five minutes. However, the energy required for maintaining the portal was still too high, causing the system to overheat and shut down. Experiment 4. Energy Distribution and Amplification Our latest experiment focused on optimizing the energy distribution and amplification system. We hoped that by refining the energy input and directing it more efficiently, we could further stabilize the portal and reduce the strain on our equipment. The results were promising. We managed to maintain an open portal for over 30 minutes. We were also able to catch a glimpse of the other dimension, which appeared to be a realm of darkness and mystery. In conclusion, our progress in establishing a stable portal to another dimension has been significant, but we still face challenges in maintaining the portal for extended periods. Further research and experimentation are required to overcome these obstacles. Dr. Weevil and I remain committed to our goal and will continue our efforts in the coming weeks. Dear cousin, I hope this letter finds you well. I felt the need to share with you what has been happening at the Weevil Estate lately. Things have taken a peculiar turn, and I am quite concerned for everyone involved, even if, as the chef, it's not my business. Dr. Marcus Weevil no longer joins us for dinner and I hardly ever see him around the house. His absence is quite noticeable, and I can't help but wonder what keeps him so preoccupied. As for Edward, he has been eating less and less, and it truly saddens me to see him growing increasingly frail. I do my best to prepare meals that might tempt his appetite, but he barely touches his plate. If this continues, he'll be nothing but skin and bones. In an attempt to find some semblance of normalcy amidst the odd happenings, I asked Genevieve, Edward's carer, if she would like to join me for a date. I thought it might be a welcome distraction for both of us, but she seemed lost in her own thoughts and politely declined. I can't help but feel that she too is affected by the strange atmosphere in the house. Something is certainly going on in this place, but I can't quite put my finger on it. The air is heavy with an unsettling tension, and I worry for the well-being of everyone here. I will keep a close eye on the situation and inform you if I learn anything more. Still, in more positive news, the local newspaper has agreed to print my recipe. I may be able to make a little cash on the side selling some of the herbs from the garden. Please take care and know that you are always in my thoughts. I hope we can catch up in person soon. Yours sincerely, Renton. As Dr. Marcus Weevil and I have continued our experiments on opening a stable portal to another dimension, I have begun to observe a shift in Dr. Weevil's motivations and interests. While our initial research was focused on advancing scientific knowledge and exploring uncharted territory, I've noticed that Dr. Weevil's recent ramblings and behavior are increasingly leaning toward paranormal and occultic themes. I have attempted to maintain a purely scientific perspective on our work, but Dr. Weevil's preoccupation with the mysterious realm beyond the portal has become concerning. He has started to delve deeper into the ancient tome we discovered, unearthing esoteric rituals and obscure knowledge that seem to hold a powerful sway over him. Moreover, Dr. Weevil has grown more secretive, often working late into the night without my assistance. He has also started to exhibit signs of emotional distress, which I believe may be related to his brother's failing health. I fear that his desperation to save Edward might be pushing him to cross boundaries that should not be crossed. 
I've tried to voice my concerns to Dr. Weevil, but he seems dismissive of any potential risks associated with our experiments. He remains determined to harness the power of the other dimension, believing that it holds the key to healing his brother and unlocking unimaginable potential. As a dedicated researcher and assistant, I am committed to supporting Dr. Weevil in our scientific pursuits. However, I cannot shake the feeling that we are venturing into dangerous territory, both scientifically and ethically. I will continue to monitor the situation closely and do my best to ensure that our work remains grounded in the principles of responsible scientific inquiry. The 26th of November, 1983. My experiments grow ever more intricate and exacting as I endeavor to harness the power necessary to sustain a stable portal. The ancient artifacts and rituals that have guided me thus far appear to hold the key, yet I have become painfully aware of the inherent dangers that lurk within these esoteric practices. A terrible incident has befallen me, one that has shaken me to my very core. Last eve I enlisted the aid of a trusted assistant, a young man of great promise and intellect to help me monitor the energy levels of the portal during a particularly complex ritual. We had hoped to establish a stronger connection to the other dimension, but as the ritual reached its zenith, something went horribly awry. The energies we sought to control suddenly surged, breaking free from their carefully crafted restraints and wreaking havoc upon the laboratory. In that terrible moment, I watched in horror as my assistant was struck by a burst of unbridled energy. His body contorted in agony before collapsing lifeless to the floor. Yet what transpired next defies all reason and understanding. For a brief and horrifying instant, the assistant seemed to rise again, a mere husk of his former self, shambling towards me with unseeing eyes. He took a few staggering steps before succumbing to the grievous head injury he had sustained, his body falling limp and lifeless once more. This harrowing event has left me reeling, filled with a profound sense of guilt and responsibility for the loss of an innocent life. It stands as a stark reminder of the perils I face in my pursuit of the unknown and the consequences of my hubris. Yet I cannot abandon my quest, for the potential to unlock unimaginable secrets and transform our world for the better remains. I must tread more cautiously, ever vigilant of the dangers that lurk in the shadows, lest I pay an even greater price for my ambition. Dear Jackie, I'm writing to you because something happened at the Weevil Estate the other night that's got me all sorts of worried. I know I ain't the most educated fella, but I'm hoping this letter will help me in case things take a turn for the worse. You see, I was working late, tending to the gardens as usual when I saw Dr. Marcus Weevil sneaking around the grounds with a shovel in hand. It struck me as odd, considering the hour, so I hid behind some bushes to watch what he was doing. To my shock, I saw him burying what looked like a body in the garden. It sent shivers down my spine, I tell you. Now I thought about going to the police, but then I remembered how well the Weevil family pays me and how hard it is to find work these days. I ain't proud of it, but I gotta put food on the table for my family, you know? So I decided to keep my mouth shut, at least for now. But I also ain't no fool. I wanted to write down what I saw just in case something unfortunate happens to me too. I plan to keep this letter on me at all times, so if someone finds it, they'll know the truth. I hope it never comes to that, but it's a tough world out there, and I gotta look out for myself and my family. I pray that whatever's going on at the Weevil Estate won't come back to haunt me. Take care, Jackie. I'll keep you updated if I find out anything else. Yours sincerely, Tom. The 7th of January, 1984. My dearest Edward remains oblivious to the true nature of my recent endeavors and I found it necessary to maintain this deception for his own well-being. I've told him that my long hours and absence from his side are the result of my immersion in academic research, a far cry from the truth that I now navigate the treacherous realms of the occult. The weight of this lie weighs heavily upon my conscience, and I long for the day when I can share the fruits of my labor with him without fear of the consequences. Yet even as I continue to delve deeper into the mysteries of the other dimensions, I find myself increasingly beset by disquieting dreams. Each night I am visited by a haunting presence, a formless, shadowy entity that seems to hover at the edge of my perception. It whispers to me in a language I cannot understand, its voice insidious and seductive, 
as if it seeks to draw me further into its dark embrace. These nocturnal visitations leave me drained and uneasy, my nights devoid of the restorative respite I so desperately crave. I cannot help but wonder if my meddling in the unknown has somehow drawn the attention of malevolent forces from beyond our world, and whether these dreams are a warning or a portent of darker things to come. Despite the turmoil that now plagues my heart and mind, I must persevere in my quest for knowledge. I have come too far to turn back now, and I cannot allow fear or doubt to cloud my judgment. For Edward's sake, and for the potential good that may come from my discoveries, I must continue to tread the dangerous path I have chosen, even as the shadows gather around me. I finally decided to confront Marcus about his absence. I told him how much Edward needed him, and how his distance was affecting his brother's spirits. He seemed genuinely upset by my words, but he insisted that his research was for Edward's benefit. I couldn't help but feel frustrated. I hope he understands that Edward needs more than just a potential cure. He needs his brother's love and support. April 26th, 1984. For more than 35 years I have carried with me a burden of guilt, an unspoken anguish that has haunted me since that fateful day in our youth. In a moment of anger I pushed Edward, my own beloved brother, never intending the grievous harm that would befall him. His fall was awkward, and a sickening snap echoed through the air as something in his back broke, irrevocably changing both of our lives forevermore. Edward's injury left him wheelchair-bound, robbed of the ability to walk and forever reliant on the aid of others. Yet in all the years that have passed since that terrible day, he has never once judged me or sought to use the event against me. His kindness and understanding have been unwavering, even in the face of my own self-loathing and remorse. My brother's steadfast love and forgiveness have served as a beacon of hope in my darkest moments, and they now drive me to search for a way to heal his injuries and restore the life that was so cruelly taken from him. It is this determination that has led me to explore the unknown realms beyond our own, in the hope that I may find a power or knowledge that can mend the wounds of the past. My journey is fraught with danger and uncertainty, but I must press on, for the chance to right the wrongs I have committed and to repay the debt I owe to my dear brother. It is a debt that can never truly be repaid, but I shall strive with all my heart and soul to make amends and find a way to heal both Edward's body and the unspoken pain that lies between us. Today Marcus came to visit Edward, and it seemed like a small step in the right direction. They talked for a while, and I could see the happiness in Edward's eyes. I hope this marks a turning point for both of them. I understand that Marcus is working hard on his own research, but it's vital for him to be there for Edward as well. The 3rd of July, 1984. As the days pass, I cannot help but notice the steady decline in Edward's health. My heart aches to see the once vibrant spirit within him slowly ebb away, like a candle flickering in the dark. His once lively conversations and laughter have become all too rare, replaced by long periods of silence and a growing sense of weariness. These days Edward spends more and more time asleep, his body seeking refuge from the pain and suffering that plague his waking hours. It is in these moments of quiet repose that I am painfully reminded of the urgency of my quest the ever-dwindling sands in the hourglass that measures the time we have left together. Genevieve, Edward's devoted carer, has not been immune to the effects of his deteriorating condition. I have observed her own demeanor worsen as she bears witness to the slow, inexorable march of his illness. The once cheerful and compassionate woman now carries a heavy heart, the strain of her duties and the knowledge of Edward's suffering etched into the lines of her face. Despite this, she remains steadfast in her care, a testament to her dedication and love for my brother. The spectre of death looms ever closer, and I can feel the cold tendrils of despair creeping into my heart, threatening to consume me. Yet I cannot give in to these dark emotions, for Edward's sake and for the hope that still burns within me. I must push forward in my pursuit of the unknown, seeking out the hidden knowledge and power that might grant Edward a chance at a better life. The path is fraught with danger and shadowed by uncertainty, but I cannot waver in my resolve. For my brother, for Genevieve, and for the love that binds us together, I will face the darkness and whatever secrets it may hold, no matter the cost. 
Today, I walked into Edward's room to find him slumped over in his wheelchair, lifeless. My heart shattered into a million pieces, and tears began to flow uncontrollably. On the floor, there was a photograph of Edward and Marcus as children, back when Edward could still walk. The image was a haunting reminder of happier times, and I couldn't help but wonder if Edward had been looking at it before he passed away. I searched the house frantically for Marcus, desperate to find him and break the devastating news. It took hours before I finally stumbled upon him in the kitchen, rummaging for food. He looked like a shadow of his former self, disheveled, gaunt, and completely detached from the world. The dashing, confident man I had once known seemed to have vanished, replaced by this hollow shell of a person. Tears streaming down my face, I told him about Edward's passing. The look in his eyes was a mixture of shock, disbelief, and unbearable grief. As we stood there, I couldn't help but wonder what could have happened to the once close brothers, how they had drifted so far apart, and if things could have been different if Marcus had been there for Edward more during his final days. The cruel hand of fate has struck once more, tearing Edward from our grasp and plunging us into the depths of despair. My beloved brother, whom I sought so desperately to save, has succumbed to his ailment, leaving behind a void in my heart that can never be filled. As I stand before his lifeless form, I am overwhelmed by the enormity of my failure, the bitter realization that I could not save him from the darkness that claimed his fragile body. In the wake of Edward's passing, I have redoubled my efforts and finally achieved what once seemed impossible, the creation of a stable portal to the other dimension. As the shimmering gateway opened before me, the creature from my previous summoning emerged, its enigmatic form now more tangible, beckoning me to follow it to the realm beyond. My nightmares too have intensified, plaguing my sleep with visions of unspeakable horrors and strange alien landscapes. I cannot shake the feeling that these dreams are somehow connected to the creature and the world that lies just beyond the portal. Their haunting images burned into my mind's eye like a brand upon my very soul. Genevieve, too, has been devastated by Edward's passing. Her eyes, once filled with kindness and warmth, are now clouded with grief. The tears that stream down her cheeks are testament to the depth of her sorrow. We find solace in each other's company, our shared loss forging a bond of understanding and mutual comfort. Together we laid Edward to rest in the family crypt, his final resting place a somber reminder of the ephemeral nature of life. As we said our farewells, the cold stone walls seemed to echo with the weight of our sorrow, their unyielding embrace a reflection of the pain that now binds us together. The loss of Edward has left an indelible mark upon our souls, a wound that may never fully heal. Yet even in the midst of our anguish we must find the strength to persevere. For in the darkness that now surrounds us I see a glimmer of hope, a beacon that beckons me to continue my search for the unknown, to seek out the power that might yet bring salvation to our shattered world. And so, with a heavy heart, I embark once more upon the path I have chosen, guided by the love and memory of my dear brother. In his name, and for the sake of all who suffer as he did, I will brave the shadows and face the unknown, no matter the cost. In pursuit of the truth, I shall follow the creature into the other dimension, risking everything to uncover the secrets that lie hidden within the realm beyond the portal. The years of research which took me away from my brother must not be in vain. August 13th, 1984. Oh, what have I done? My reckless pursuit of knowledge has led me down a path from which there may be no return. Today I ventured into the other dimension, guided by the creature I had summoned earlier. It promised me enlightenment and secrets untold. The realm was initially a breathtaking spectacle, an alien landscape filled with colors and structures beyond my imagination. But as we ventured further, the world around me began to transform into a hellish and nightmarish landscape. The sky darkened and the ground cracked and bled, as if the very soil was alive and suffering. I knew in my heart that I had to escape, and so I turned and fled. My every step was hounded by the relentless pursuit of the creature and its horrifying whispers, which had once only tormented me in my dreams. To my horror, other beings appeared from the shadows, clad in strange robes and joined the chase. They were sentient and their gazes seemed to pierce my very soul. I raced back to the portal, barely making it through before the horrors could overtake me. 
but now I am left with the terrible realization that I have opened a doorway to a realm that should never have been disturbed. The dark manifestations have begun to seep through the portal and I cannot close it. I have unleashed a terror upon this world, and perhaps upon all mankind. I am filled with dread and despair. I must hide, though I do not know if there is any sanctuary that will keep me safe from the darkness that is now upon us. I can only hope that someone will find these words and understand the grave mistake I have made, and pray that they can find a way to undo what I have done. As the twilight of my days draws near, I see the end, it's all so clear. With shadows long and sunlight wanes, I face my fate, accept the chains. My brother lost, so far from home, in darkness deep, he's left to roam. Yet in my heart, I hold the key, to guide him back, to set him free. When I am gone, may he ascend, from shadows dark and paths that bend, and through the sorrow may he find, the light once more to heal his mind. In memory sweet, our bond shall thrive, and in my absence he'll survive, for love transcends the mortal coil, unbroken by life's ceaseless toil. So, brother dear, when I depart, hold fast to hope within your heart, and find the light that we once knew, a brighter path, a life anew.